When attempting to move this unit not under its own power, it has kind of a design flaw in that it cannot be lifted from the bottom. The drive shaft and the hydraulic tank sticks out about an inch too far, which means you have to lift it from the top to not cause any serious damage. So the idea here was to try and get the Genie off the trailer for two reasons. The first one being that it's hard to work on the trailer and it's a safety hazard when working on an elevated platform. The second reason is that we needed the trailer for another special project that hopefully I can announce in the next couple of weeks. You may have noticed that the bobcat goes up on two wheels and the cat is on its tippy toes as well. Ultimately, we decided that this was not worth risking what could happen and aborted this plan until we could figure out something safer. Okay, so the first thing I think I'm going to do is clean this area up, use a uh, sander, start at a higher grit, like maybe 120, maybe even more aggressive, and try to get this out and then try to smooth it down for 100, 600, 800 get it nice and smooth, and then paint it. So, see what we can do. Okay, let's start with 100. So I had a hunch last night and I want to try it. I want to just try to put 12 volts into the instrument panel and see what happens. I'm going to pull the fuse out for that and directly apply it. I don't have keys to this. The rest of the wiring harness that went towards the engine is shattered, but I really want to see if I get the instrument uh, panel up and see how many hours are on this machine. So let's give it a shot. I worked on this for a couple of hours, but it turned out that the wiring harness was just too damaged and was buried underneath the boom. Everything I tried showed that the positive and negative terminals were shorted together, which is not too surprising considering the fact that I can see the wiring harness got pretty melted. All right, something that I've really been meaning to do but have been avoiding it is work on this. It's trying to get this spaghetti out of here and I've just been avoiding it because it's greasy and gross and I thought maybe I would need to take the boom off to get all these out. I may still have to but I'm going to try to get the ones out that I can get to and go from there. See what we're going to have to do to, uh, to get the ones that are a little more difficult out. So let's get started. There's one. Here's two. This one's fully intact, aside from being burned, but I can have them make a cable from it, so that's what's good. Yikes. 
So in the interest of getting this finished and getting uh, these out of here, I'm not going to be able to get these off until I figure out how to get the boom up. But I want that to stall my progress. I still want to finish getting this cleaned up so I can get it ready and get it painted. Let the paint cure on there for a while while I'm doing other stuff. So with that being said, I want to try to get these as best as I can and drop them down underneath. Just get them out of this hole so I can get the, the rest of this cleaned up without it, you know, interfering. All right, so let's get to it. Turns out that I was only able to move a couple of hoses without moving the boom up, so I started to prepare to manually move the boom. You know, after starting to clean this up, I realized there's so many nooks and crannies in this, it's going to be really hard to spray paint, get in deep in some of these channels, get under here. I think I'd have to end up taking it off anyways so I can get to some of these areas. And I figure if I'm taking it off and I'm trying to do all this cleanup work, I think it's more worth my time to have the powder coating place do it. So hopefully this will just be a couple hundred bucks for them to do this one piece. I think it's going to be pretty heavy though. I'm going to get this off of here and then take it to the powder coaters and hopefully Hopefully it won't be too much money to do this one. What you don't see here is that I traced out the hoses that feed the lifting cylinder on the boom and loosened them. It's a tight squeeze, but you can do it from underneath the unit.
I am using silicon plugs that are typically used for powder coating to plug these ports and prevent debris from entering the system. So I believe that's a backflow valve, so we'll get that off of there. I had to use a crow's foot here to get this hose off since there's no room for a regular wrench. My goal here is not to remove all the paint and bring it back to bare metal, but to get it back to a clean, uncontaminated surface. The reason for that is that the original powder coating on the frame is going to be way stronger than anything I can apply from a can. If I can preserve these base layers, I will have a very strong and long-lasting protective coating against rust. That is going to wrap up this episode. Thanks again for watching and please remember to subscribe and hit that like button. That really helps this channel out and allows us to continue making content. done it because I knew it was going to be f***ing terrible. Oh my god. You okay? Yeah. Thank you for wearing your safety goggles. Yeah, you're welcome. There's a valve on the bottom of this hydraulic tank to turn it off. Uh-huh. Uh, the valve is so big you can't close it all the way. <laughs> well, who would have designed something like that? And so I can't stop it.